In the last episode, we talked about learning how to learn. And so we provided people with a few tools that they could use to try to learn information and remember that information for a longer period of time. Things like uh, retrieval practice, interleaving, um, desirable difficulties more generally. And hopefully, people will be able to use those skills to be able to help them uh, improve their learning across the board when it comes to uh, learning a new language, um, a new skill like the guitar or a sport, uh, or even formal training like calculus or computer programming or, or everyday thinking. And we're going to continue on that theme today uh, in providing people with skills that they can use in their everyday lives. And we're going to be borrowing something from science, specifically some of the tools that scientists use in the lab that we can use every day. Yeah, I agree. And in fact, I don't think uh, there's anything particularly special about what scientists do in the lab. Yes, they're, they're performing experiments, they're doing data analysis, uh, they're using statistics, but these are just formal ways of, of finding things out, of uh, detecting strangeness, of picking up whether something fishy is going on. Now, what, what we do in our everyday lives, we may not realize it, but we're actually using some of the tools of science as well. But we use these informally, we use these intuitively. And this idea came up in my conversation actually with uh, Tom Gilovich. Can you tell me about the intuitive scientist? Uh, sure, that's a, a, a metaphor that people have used to uh, draw a parallel between what scientists do, which is try to understand the world, and there are some formal tools for doing that. And what scientists try to do professionally, of course, we all try to do in our everyday lives to figure out the world around us. And there are uh, a lot of similarities between what we do uh, as uh, people in our everyday lives and what scientists do. In fact, science developed out of you know, the kinds of mental habits that uh, we had. We, over time, recognized which, what the problems are and what are the things that allow the most uh, powerful conclusions. So uh, it would be odd if regular thinking was just radically different than uh, scientific thinking. It's different, uh, but there are some parallels uh, between it. We're trying, just like the science scientist does, to identify what, what are the phenomena out there. Okay, there are the phenomena. Why, why are they that way? We, we ask why uh, all the time. You know, there used to be this beer commercial in the United States of why ask why. And it's a brilliant little tagline because it's, by raising it, it's illustrating it. We just do that all the time. Uh, something happens and we want to know why. That's what scientists do and that's what we do uh, in our daily lives. This idea of applying the formal tools of science to our everyday lives uh, came up in my conversation with Michael Brenner and Pia Sorensen who are teaching uh, another edX course called Science and Cooking. And here's what they had to say. 